Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kill 10 Rats. Welcome back to the Age of Decadence. We have a choice to make, and I think I know which way our bread is going to be buttered. Um, we can have a deal with Hamza, as we saw in the last episode, and that would eventually lead to us basically replacing Galius with Serenas, who seems to be a bit of an imbecile. And there's also the matter of, you know, it's, it's, it's probably best for the long-term survival of our character here, at least from his perspective, to now side with the Lord, because then he can create a vacuum for himself. There will be trouble with the merchants, the Imperial Guard will be under heavy suspicion, the nobles will be in disarray and the assassins guild will also probably be somewhat in trouble although the thing is like we can't really stir up something with the assassins now since as soon as we have the meeting with hamza we are locked into the straba side of things so i've tested that and as soon as we we meet Hamza and we turn him around and we flip him onto, uh, what's her name, da Darina or something, Darista. Mm. He will no longer talk to us, like Galius will no longer talk to us. So if we approach him now, we can tell him about the conspiracy, which is what we're going to be doing. Strabos is conspiring against you, my lord. I have the names of everyone involved. I thank you for the warning. Stay here as my guest while the boatmen do what they do best. So now we'll have a an overnight stay while all of our former co-conspirators are getting murdered. And that's it then. You've served me well, Begol. Swear your allegiance to me and be welcomed into the ranks of those who have chosen to serve my house. Any past oaths will be dissolved, any past transgressions against my house will be forgiven in consideration of services already rendered and faithful service expected from you from this day forward. I swear my fealty to you, my lord. Good. I have a task for you, one of great importance. I'm sure you've heard about what happened in Terran. The Imperial Guards have finally shown their true colors. They are a snake coiled to strike. The question is, do I wait until the last moment, becoming a prisoner in my own city, depending on goodwill of others, or do I take steps to defend myself and my city from those who take it away from me? I think you know the answer. I need an army. An army that will stand between me and the so-called guards. An army that will stand firm between stability and chaos. Where would you find an army? You don't have to worry about it, I've already found my army. I made a deal with one of the Ordu tribes. You'll open your gates to the Ordu? I've already opened them to the Imperial Guards. The true enemy is already within my walls. Now it's time to even the scales. At worst, the Ordu will keep the Imperial Guards in check, while the Guards will keep the Ordu from running amok in my city. At best, uh, we can all dream, can we not? Seems to be a certain pattern emerging. That was basically also what Strabos was doing with the Assassins and the Guards sort of trying to establish some sort of checks and balances there, which didn't really work out in his favor. You think you can control them? Why demonize the Ordu? They may be savages, but they are not fools. They will serve me, and in exchange, they will be well rewarded and granted certain advantages. Thus, when they fight, they won't fight for me, but to protect their new way of life. Has there ever been a better reason to fight and die for? If you know the Ordu, then you know that only a dire necessity would force them to accept my offer. This necessity will keep them in line, and once they realize that living in the greatest city in the world is better than living in tents on the plains, they will be my most loyal soldiers, for nobody appreciates good things in life as someone who has started with nothing. Yeah, that probably is gonna work for the first generation, my friend, but uh, let's see how that pans out once you deal with the grandchildren. Well, you're probably dead by then anyway, so what do you care? What do you want me to do? I want you to bring them here. The Ordu should have been here a week ago, but they are stalling. Go to their encampment, find out what the problem is and fix it. Do it for me and you will be well rewarded. I will do that, my lord. One more thing. The only way to the Ordu's camp lies through Haran's Pass. The pass is controlled by the Imperial Guards. If they suspect that you're working for me, they'll throw you off the mountain. Needless to say, it's your best interest that they don't. 
What are they going to do when they see an approaching army? They will send for help and will try to delay you until the, reinforce the reinforcements get there. If they do, it's over. The Ordu won't stand a chance against a legion of veteran soldiers holding high ground. So, whatever you're going to do, do it fast. So, suddenly we are cast in the role of negotiator slash, well, almost army leader. Where we have to get the Ordu safely into the premises here so they can, you know, be a deterrent against the guard. Nothing we really haven't heard before. In any case, it's one thing we could do. Now, we have a fair number of points. Uh, I... I don't know. We could raise the lock picking, but that would pretty much need to go up to six, and that will lock us into that quite heavily, when we probably don't need to do that yet. It will also prevent us from getting a crafting up to a level that we need it at. We do need one more point in streetwise and two more points in crafting. And maybe some more points in lore as well, but we'll see about that. Because there is something else we can do now. Let's see. Right, so we have changed sides. I haven't actually ever done a follow-up on what happens if we try and meet up with Senna or Lorenza again. I doubt that there is anything... I doubt there's any dialogue for it. They're probably dead or at least <coughs> unavailable. Let's see. We are mourning... We are mourning the death of our lord. Please leave. Alright, that's one down. How about you, lady? We are mourning the death of our lady. Okay, so... Yeah, that's how that goes. The high and mighty nobles are fallen and we still live. The drifter has managed to, you know, come up on top again. And also ingratiate himself with the local noble house that is rather nice now one thing i want to do is just show off how much more there actually is to the game right now because we have been very centered on the the whole political aspect of it and, and all that sort of thing but there is definitely some more to it so if we talk to Abukar here now, you see a bald bearded man fiddling with an old telescope, bearing signs of crude repair. If you want me to do a chart, you're wasting your time, says the man, his accent thick and heavy. What chart? I'm a stargazer, says the man impatiently, as if it should have been obvious. But I don't do charts anymore, so don't ask. Now what do you want? I need a lore master. I am that as well. Surely you've heard about Abukar. So tell me what you need to go away. What you need and go away. We've heard about him, he's actually referred to as Abukar the Mad, so maybe we should be taking all that with a grain of salt. Um, what is this thing you are fiddling around with? A telescopium, a wonder of wonders. Through it I observe stars and their movements, although it's not the stars but the void between them that captures my attention now. Why? I have learned that the void is anything but empty. The darkness hides it well, but nothing can stay hidden forever. There are those who dwell in the void and have taken it upon myself to watch them. And I guess now we can see why they call him that. Have you seen any yet? I have not, but the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Okay. They are there somewhere, I know that now. What makes you think that? What makes me think that? The wisdom of the ancients contained in the scrolls I found in the ruins of the library of Saros. Oh, the truth they revealed. I burnt the scrolls, but I can't burn the words imprinted in my mind. They are the reason I watch the void now. And uh, suddenly things take a turn for the call of Cthulhu. Um, what did the scrolls say? They said that the Magi reached far into the void and brought forth beings that are not of this or any other world. Beings that though neither life, the way we know it, nor death. The link has been severed and the gates sealed, but the path remains. 
The seal can be unlocked and the spells can be reversed unless we stand guard and watch the void. Is that what the scrolls said, word for word? There were dozens of scrolls reduced to fragments. I had to decipher the message and deduce, deduce its meaning hidden to the un, un, uninitiated. Jesus Christ, I'm very sorry for fumbling around. <laughs> Any chance you might have erred a little bit? I am a third generation lore master, says Aboka proudly. I do not err. Well, I'm a 10th level vice president, I'll have you know. Uh, you've mentioned the library of Saros. Do you know where it is? There is nothing there, says Abukar, but if you want to gaze upon the ruins of the greatest library in the world, I won't stop you. Let me mark it on your map. What did you seek at the library? Knowledge, what else? I was trying to solve a problem, and I hoped that the great library of Saros might shed some light on it. I was mistaken. What kind of problem? I was working on a device to detect energy fluctuations. It could detect random deviations with 80% accuracy, but couldn't handle larger and more frequent fluctuations. Obviously, I miscalculated somewhere. But the nature of the old world's magic is hard, is hardly a well-explored field these days. One has no choice but to make assumptions, which leads to setbacks and disappointments. I thought that magic was gone from the world. Then you thought wrong. The magi are gone, but the magic they unleashed is still here, lurking in our own backyard, waiting for the right moment to strike. How do you fight that which you can't see? How do you stop that which has been prophesied to come? Our own backyard? You mean the abyss? What else? We've accepted the abyss and learned to stay away from it. We speak of magic that haunts it, without any understanding of what it is and why it's still there, centuries later. Yet any force that affects the physical world can be detected and measured, even if it's invisible to the naked eye. So I guess he's trying to build a Geiger counter then. This device, do you still have it? It's not for sale. Everything is for sale if the price is right. A man of the world, are you? You want my device? Then bring me one of equal value. Hmm, okay. So you want to explore the abyss? Yes, but not the way fools do it with sheep, mystical charts and divining rods. The dangerous spots have abnormal energy spikes, so all you need to do is construct a device that can read them. Easier said than done, of course, but the paths worth traveling are never easy. Okay, I have, I have another item I want you to look at. Uh, well, here is the jellyfish. It's an object of great power. I can feel it, testing the walls of its prison. I can hear its whispers. Take it away before it pollutes my study. Okay, maybe later. Right, so we've learned about the library. And we've learned that there is nothing for us there. Which, of course, means that there's probably something for us there. And that is indeed the case. Whoops. Ho holy crap, what happened? Ah, okay, camera momentarily got locked. Um, and it is indeed on our map now. It's right here. And up there is the path, the pass that we can uh, travel to for the Lord's Quest. And there is Ganazar. But for now, let's go to the Library of Zaros. And uh, we do need the Streetwise 6 there because there is someone um, we need to make go away. The Imperial Library of Saros was actually built after the fall of the Empire, in a noble yet futile attempt to preserve the rapidly disappearing knowledge for future generations. The library operated for almost four decades, but came to an unexpected end when rumors that the library collected more than dusty old scrolls started spreading. The volunteers protecting the library managed to repel two attacks before the complex was overrun by raiders, who didn't leave many stones unturned looking for anything valuable. And we go, we'll go exploring. And there is our friendly prospector do we have six uh, we have six yeah by the looks of it the rules have been picked clean and anything worth a few coppers had been stripped away and still there's a prospector here come join me says the prospector grinning i've been here for almost a week and nothing pleases me more now than the sight of another human being the coffee tastes like dirt but you're welcome to it there's some bread too if you're hungry and our perception and streetwise tells us that he's up to something shifty so we refuse his offer if my food isn't good enough for you, I suggest you be on your way, stranger, says the prospector, putting his hand on his axe. And again, streetwise, wish I could, but I was told to scout the area and wait for the legatus here. He will be pissed if I'm not here, trust me. You'll have enough troubles dealing with him when he's in a good mood. But if he's pissed, he'll nail you to a cross first and ask questions second. Why would he nail me to a cross? asks the prospector in confusion. He thinks everyone's a spy. You have to admit, though, running into you here is a hell of a coincidence. And the Legatus doesn't believe in those. 
Swearing, the prospector starts packing his things quickly and retreats without saying another word to you. We'll wait for him to leave. If we don't have Streetwise 6 here, we will have to fight him, I think. Right, so we can have a look around. And it actually pays to have a look around. Something about the first of the Magi. He who will ascend up to the sky. He who founded his vaulted dome above Madaran. He who raised the mighty pillars. Guess that's what Bayaz was up to after he sorted everything out with Logan Nine Fingers. You find nothing of interest. Okay. There came a great disturbance in the town of Lakia by the Nazvian Sea with confusion and flight. Yeah, sounds all rather biblical in a way, but, you know, that's just the style of uh, the writing, I guess. Mm. Ink faded, it disappeared a long time ago. There is nothing for us here. There's also an upstairs, but there's also nothing I could glean from that. So we'll go down in the basement and have a rummage around there. Now, why can't I... I think on the way back I'll, I'll, I'll see this, don't I? Because uh, there is another contraption here, but that'll come into play a bit later. Uh, we'll examine the shelves. Where did it come? And like the army who brought it, the magnitude humbled all that came before. Men and towns burned alike and even the sea stirred with the fury of war. The sun became as night and the moon ceased to shine. The war continued with the passing of many years and although countless thousands had died, the Kantari servants of power called upon the gods of chaos, who came forth like an eruption consuming the armies and fleets of men. So there we have a reference to that cataclysmic summoning event again, where the Kantari apparently had some sort of demonic host that was countered by whatever it was that they call gods that they summoned to their sites, like those uh, high ones. And that's what this reference is. The Magi summons beings which have no king and dane superiority to all that came before them and they are immortal but this is interesting you find an old map but it falls apart the fragment depicts a strange arc in the middle of nowhere and a stylized tower surrounded by small dwellings you add both locations to your map so we've unlocked further points of interest which is one reason why this place is interesting you can unlock the arch and the tower of Zamedi. And here we have a lore success, where we can also get the map markers, I think, uh, this way. I think this is the same two map markers that we pick up, but I'm not entirely certain. Um, a single year, and again, great number of Kantari ships cross the sea. Okay, yeah, we, we just get some glimpses and fragments of the previous invasion, but the most important bit is down here, which is an ancient machinery. You see a strange machine, old and broken, stripped of any part that had any value. We'll see if we can fix it. As far as you can tell, it's a generator built after the fall of the Empire, which explains its design, less reliant on otherworldly engine energies and things man wasn't meant to know. It runs on oil, but the parts that inject the oil into the main chamber and the air valve regulating the air intake are missing. The rest you can do without, considering that you only need this fearsome engine of destruction to report for duty one last time. Come to think about it, you could probably do without the fuel injector and rig up something very temporary and hope that the machine doesn't blow up in your face. I think the temporary solution requires a hell of a lot of crafting. And if we can get the two parts, then we could make do with crafting five, I think. Now, how do I... How do I get this? To ah, okay, perception success. You notice the telltale sign of a fake wall behind the elevator. So we will search for a switch. Knowing that there is another chamber behind the wall, it doesn't take long for you to find a hidden switch. Press the switch. We press the switch, but nothing happens. It probably needs power. Yes, indeed you do. That's where the generator comes in. So we'll head on out. Because we need to go back to Madaran for this. Uh, we will report our findings to Abokar the Mad and see where that leads us. He's in the Comercium, so we'll go there and we'll head to his tower, which is 
right over here. Right, so... We have seen a bit more. Hang on, I'll just step out quickly. just want to show off the, the world map quickly. So, as you can see, there is now this location. And this location. This doesn't seem to be a thing. Yeah, I think this is the two locations that we got marked by our lore success, but also just by reading the other crumbling map. So we are... We didn't add four locations to the map, we just added two. This is a... I don't think we can do anything with that yet. And this is actually where our friend Esbenas is meeting and uh, is, is uh, hiding out now. And if we... Like Espen is the raider who kidnapped the noble in Terran. And if we actually want to accomplish that, uh, anything there, we'll need a thousand Imperials. Hey Abukar, I found an old machine beneath the Library of Saros, but it's missing some parts. There's nothing there, didn't I tell you that? And we have a streetwise and intelligence options here. Is that why you've disabled the generator? So that nobody can find that nothing you want to keep hidden? You want to see it? You think that you'll be better off knowing? You think that this warning left to us as if we can do anything but pray and hope that the worst won't come to pass is something you can easily forget? Then go. Go and see for yourself. He opens one of the crates and fishes out a strange device. I sold the other one to that imbecile who runs the curio stall. If you're lucky, he still has it. So we have the... I think it's the oil injector now. Yes, indeed, we do. So if you have a Persuasion or a Sweetwise Int build, you can get the Oil Injector that way. If you don't have that, you won't have the option to make it um, to make it available for you, I think. But you can then just go around that by... Hang on. You can then go around that by making a Crafting 8 check. Uh, my camera is stuck, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to reload. <laughs> Sorry, it's an alpha build, or rather a beta build, I think. But yeah, that's that is the first time this happened to me, so don't let that scare you off. Uh, let's do that again. So thank you. Let's zoom in a bit more and head on down again. No, <laughs> okay. Never mind. Hello, go downstairs. Thank you. Thank you. Come again. Okay, there we go. Are we out now? Yes, we are. Okay. And the Curio Trader isn't very far away because he's right here. So we will have a wee word. Welcome to Marcus Cornelius Arvina's House of Curio. Looking for anything in particular? Protecting against the evil eye is always in high demand. Copper bracelets to increase your energy and improve well-being. Good luck charms. You can never have too many of those, I assure you. In fact, if you buy two, I'll give you the third for free. Eh, it sounds like a very good deal if you're a complete sucker. I'm looking for some parts. Parts, eh? A rare commodity these days, but I might have something for you. What do you need? I need an air valve. Why, it's your lucky day, friend. This amazing, multi-purpose, one-of-a-kind air valve looking piece of history can be yours for a token sum of 100 Imperials. There we go, we have 100 Imperials and nothing more for the moment. So we will go back to the world map and back to our library. And then see what lurks behind that wall. And this will actually, <laughs> this will actually be a first for me because I've never ended up with a build that could open that. This is actually the first time that I will be seeing this. I've always lacked a few points here and there, but I think with the current point distribution that we have, we should be able to fix it. So I'm rather curious where that leads us. So right, let's go here and get this thing repaired. Okay, let's quickly take stock crafting five. That should be okay. And in a pinch, we can always add to it. Right. Ancient machinery. Crafting. Reattach the air valve. It takes a while, but eventually the air valve is restored to its rightful place. And reattach the oil injector. Hey. Okay, that was always a failure for me. 
It takes you a few hours to make the injector work as, it, as advertised and pump oil into the main chamber of the machine as needed. Add oil and you're good to go. Five jars should be enough. Uh, we don't have oil. God damn it. Uh, yeah, of course we don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, where do we get that? I honestly can't remember. Hmm, the thing, I don't really want to leave this hanging though, so... I actually was planning on making this the last episode for the moment, until the game... You know, get some further updates, get some further content added to it, and uh, just basically gets gets released, I guess, because, you know... I feel like for, for a sort of a beta series, this is... has gone on quite long enough, but... I will fool around a little bit off camera and see if I can come up with a way to find oil and if I can we'll just add that once I have it figured out and wrap it up that way I might also still show off the assassin build at some point in the next couple of days and just make a couple of episodes where we can see a bit of combat but I think for now we have wreaked enough havoc with our friend the goal so, yeah, I'll sort it out, I'll see to get uh, the machinery running, and then I'll be back for a little bit more, and a little bit more lore. So, for now, I thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and bye for now.